Earlier we saw how you can use Java's default serialization mechanism in order to be able to write an object out to a file and read it back in. In our code we created a type called student and we wrote it out uh, to an object output stream and then we read it back in. The student, in order to be able to write it, had to extend serializable and everything inside of it had to be serializable. Well, what happens if that's not the case? And we saw that if you try to write something that isn't serializable, that it will give you a serialization exception. And if, which means that if you have control over all the pieces, you could make them all serializable and then there's no problem. Even if they are serializable, that doesn't necessarily mean you want to write them though. And if you don't have control over the code, well then maybe you can't make it serializable. So we're gonna augment our code a little bit here. I'm going to give every student some additional data, including an ID and a major. But this other data is not going to be serializable. And we're going to stick the other data inside of our student. Okay. Uh, let's go ahead and I'll make it a val, at least for now. When I create this new other data of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and uh, CS, because all the good students major in computer science. Okay. There we go. So we've made a student, but now if we attempt to run this, we're going to get an exception, okay, the not serializable exception. Of course, since I have control over other data, I could simply say extend serializable and, and we'd be good. But there will be times when you can't do that. For example, we're going to save off some of our drawings. Okay, I'd like to be able, that's good functionality to have in our drawing program. And one of the things that many of our drawing elements have is a color. It turns out that colors aren't serializable. So, and, and we can't change that. There's, right, there's nothing we can do to make a color serializable because we didn't write that code. So we need to know how to deal with that. And the simplest way to deal with that is to put what's called an attribute on certain fields that we don't want to have saved. And this attribute is at transient. So all attributes start with an at sign and then the transient means that it's not going to be saved for serialization. So if we run this now, it runs just fine. It prints out the name as Jim. But an interesting question is, what is the other data inside of that when we read it back in? And the answer is null. Okay, so this is the challenge of making things transient is when a field becomes transient when you load back in, when you deserialize from a file or from where, whatever source, that isn't loaded at all and it just winds up being null. Now we try in Scala to avoid null as much as possible. We use option types instead and so we would have none versus some and the type system would help us to, to get around this. Unfortunately, when it comes to the serialization in Java, Java uses null a lot, which is why the the exception you get for nulls, which is called a null pointer exception, is often just abbreviated NPE because they happen so much. We can't avoid that here. This is the Java library. It's going to serialize things the way that it wants to, and it's going to deserialize them. And so if something is transient, it's going to come back null. So how would you deal with this? Well, a typical way to deal with it would be, now, okay, if this data has to be saved, we have to do something called custom serialization. I'll come back to that in just a second. In the case of other data, it really would need to be custom serialization, but we'll assume first that it doesn't have to be. If it didn't have to be serialized, so if whatever this was was something we could build from other data so that we didn't need to save it, we'll have that example too. Remember, things like our draw rectangle has a properties panel in it. That properties panel does not need to be saved. There's no reason to save it. It can be rebuilt when the thing gets loaded back in. So that would be an example of something that should be transient. In this case, even though this really shouldn't be transient, we'll show how I would deal with that. So instead of making this a public val, I'm going to make it a private var and following the general naming conventions, I'm going to make it underscore OD. 
and then I am going to have an OD method which returns an, an other data and so this is going to work just like what we've seen before because this I don't have parentheses here you'll be able to access it this code is still happy it still works even though there is no field called OD but the advantage of this one is we can put a check so because this is a method we can always check if underscore OD is null we need to set it to something and so we can say underscore OD equals a new other data of it really doesn't matter because in this case the other data probably shouldn't be transient we probably do need to be able to to save it but now if we do this and we run it there is another data there it doesn't print nicely because it doesn't have a two string on it but but it it it's there it prints and it winds up being this value because we're accessing it through this method here when we deserialize it the underscore OD is null when we try to access it it goes oh hey this is a problem and it uh, and it winds up setting it for us okay so that's one way of dealing with data that can't be serialized you can make it transient but you really only make it what only want to make it transient if it doesn't need to be saved what if it does need to be saved um, what if it's something that we can't build from other stuff and so we actually need some way to save it off well turns out the answer to that is something called custom serialization so you can write two methods inside of your class that will cause it to undergo custom serialization. The first one is called write object. Okay? And write object takes an object output stream. It doesn't return anything. Okay? Whoa. we'll import that so that it's happy and the first thing this needs to do is call a default write object and so that will cause it to do its default work for writing stuff out and then we should write any additional stuff that is not part of the default write so in this case I need to write out the two fields of my other data. So one of them, now in this case they both happen to be strings, so I can use write UTF, which is a function that can be used to write out strings. So I can take my other data dot ID, sorry, underscore OD dot ID Oh, I need to call these vowels, otherwise I won't be able to access them. Since we hadn't really been playing with it, that hadn't been a problem yet, but it's needed. And then I can also write of OD dot major. So this will cause the serialization to actually write out those fields, and then when we deserialize, we have to read them back in. So this really should be private. Private def read object, which will take an object input stream. It returns unit. And as before, we need to control shift O to bring in that dot. We're going to read the default object and then we can set uh, OD equal to a new other data that is built using read UTFs of the two pieces of data. So when you do custom serialization, you write the write object and the read object. You make sure that you call the 
defaults if you want this to work nicely. Otherwise, it's not going to save the things that would normally be saved. But then you can do your own code writing out additional fields. And so now, if instead of just printing OD, we printed OD.ID, which of course would have been a null pointer exception earlier, I get the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 that we put in here because this is properly serializing it and properly deserializing it. So once again, if you don't need to save something off, make it transient. By the way, now that I've made this so it does, does the serialization, I could just make this a private var and simplify this method so all it does is it res returns underscore od. I don't really need to do the check anymore because when we deserialize it, it will actually get a value and it won't be null, but I'm leaving this in here so that when I commit it to GitHub, people will have the, the code there. But if you don't need to save something, make it transient. Technically, even if it's serializable, but you don't need to save it, make it transient. You'll be saving yourself the, the speed of serializing unneeded stuff and also the space that was associated with saving it. If there are things that aren't serializable that you do have to save, for example, the colors in our drawings, then you do custom serialization. You write write object and read object and put the appropriate code in those methods.